you know, it truly feels like, you know, I've been doing this here. Like, it did, I mean, it feels like I'm back home, you know, mm -hmm. back to a lot of uh, familiar faces and obviously the same building and, um, you know, just, it, it's a good feeling. It's a really good mm -hmm. feeling. Um, you know, part of every season is like the nerves of, you know, um, you know, the unexpected and like what, you know, but there's so much here that you're used to and comfortable with. It's definitely a, uh, a good feeling. Being a veteran leader, is there a process to that of, you know, some guys need an arm around the back, some guys need a kick in the butt, like sometimes you do it in private. How, what have you learned about that process of being a leader, a veteran leader? Well, I think, I think number one, it's, it's about, you know, building relationships. Um, you know, you know, I, 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 you know, you get to a point now. I, I'm, I take everything back to like, you know, my own experience as a dad. Um, you know, raising kids. Like, you know, it's it's ultimately, you know, this is life is about relationships. And if you're going to speak into anyone's life, whether it be a person or a teammate or a friend, I mean, you've got to have that relationship first. Otherwise, it's just going to yeah. fall on deaf ears. So, I mean, one of the reasons why I'm here so early um, is, you know, getting to know the people. That I don't know, you know, on this team, and um, you know, building that relationship with them, and then you know, just you know, hopefully getting a really good group of uh, guys together as a team, and and you know, becoming a team. You know, that's really the ultimate goal. And, you know, when you start this gig, so it's somebody. I was gonna ask, how early did you get here? I mean, obviously you're here now, but like, have you been in for like a week, a few weeks? Um, no, I got in yesterday. Yeah, so uh, you know. I don't, I don't even know when. When do when do um, position Sunday players report? 19th is report. Okay, okay. 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 so about a week, about a week early. Um, but I reached out to a lot of the guys, trying to figure out when guys were going to show up. And I felt like the number in my head that I came up with that would be a good time to show up was today. So I would expect some of our position player group kind of slowly starting filtering in a little earlier, which I've already seen some of them. So, um, but that was kind of the mindset. Do you have a favorite Lance Land story? A <laughs> hundred Lance Land stories? I mean, you know, I'm sure I could pull up something. <laughs> just about his competitive. Well, I something. just think, you know, you, when I, the first thing that comes to mind with Lance Land, whenever I think about him, is just his his willingness and durability to take the ball and his just competitiveness when he's on the mound. I mean, you know, one thing, the best thing you can say about a teammate is you know what you're going to get you, you know you can expect what you're going to get from a guy and you know the thing that I love about him is you know exactly what you're going to get this guy's going to show up he's going to take the ball he's going to be out there and he's going to compete and he's going to find a way to you know have a quality start which I mean in this game is, is so valuable as somebody who wasn't here last year as this year kind of that, that year kind of unfolded for them what was your perspective of it? like when you kind of watched it from the outside what did you sort of feel like was I don't know, wrong with this team last year. Is that kind of happened? I just think, you know, if I, you know, obviously an outsider, but to me, and I know this might, uh, you know, Cardinal fans, and you know, is it called Twitter anymore? It's not, <laughs> yeah, I probably would disagree, but to me, I, I saw what looked like kind of maybe an outlier type season. You know, you look at a group. From players' perspective, like uh, across the league, while it was happening, it was hard to it was hard to fathom. It's hard to understand. You know, then the trade deadline happened. You get rid of half the group, and then then you know when we I think when we rolled into San Diego or when San Diego rolled into St. Louis like in August, you know half the team was gone. It was a different deal, you right. know. But like when that straight the first couple months, you know, you look at it and you're just like I don't I don't understand that. Well, you know, obviously if you look at the the underlying numbers, yeah, I mean, the, you know, pitching didn't perform like they they had thought, and, you know, bullpen had some tough luck uh, losses, but it just didn't make a ton of sense. Um, so, you know, I think that, um, you know, it was a combination of some bad luck, but also some, you know, underperforming issues from some guys, and, but, you know, to, answer, to, to ultimately answer your question, as as an outsider, you looked at it and you're like, nah, I just don't. I, I mean, this team's better than that, yeah. you know. I don't know. If
almost that age. I kind of ran. No, yeah, no, it does. It, it, it's such an interesting perspective because I think for those of us who at least were around it, there was some of that too, where it's like you can sort of see two or three things that didn't get going, but at the same time, like the mass of it almost seems surprising. So I was curious if that was sort of how you looked at it too. Like. Yeah, and in you know, because players talk, you know, clubhouse. I think that more than anything, you know, because it was so foreign to this organization to have a year like that that. You know, people from the outside love to watch a place like this kind of go up in flames. You know, like when that season was happening, it was like the big talk. You know, and it, but the but the you know in the clubhouse and like guys, players talking across the league. It's like it wasn't like a yeah. I mean, what would you expect? It was more of like I mean, I can't believe that's happening. Sure. You know, it just doesn't make a ton of sense. But um, and and this is the one the message that I you know told Ollie and. I, guys that are here like the mystique of this team still is there though because like when, again we rolled in in August it was a totally different group mm-hmm. San Diego and we're at Bush Stadium and there's you know half the amount of people that there's normally in there and you know in our in our you know meetings and prep work and going over the team it's like hey look you know you still got to take this you know serious this team can beat you if you if you let them and you know, they took two out of three from us yeah. while we were there so um, you know People still across the league, uh, you know, there's a there's a lot of respect for this room, and um, you know that's not going to go away in one season. How rewarding would it be to be a part of a group that gets that back to reassert that and to be around for that? No, well, I mean it'd be awesome. You know, it's but you know not for me. I mean just sure. for us. You know, and for the fans and for the people that support this organization and for the you know front office and coaching staff. There's so many people. You know that are involved in this, and you know everyone wants to see. You know, baseball's better when the Cardinals are where they should be. And that's you know I know I'm biased, but <laughs> I, I just it's just the way I feel.